guys today we are going over some of the CFD on the factory Supra so before we start designing anything we do a baseline analysis to see kind of how the car is things we can improve on so what we would initially start out with is what we'd consider the cat of the car and that's what we're looking at right now so this is the geometry that is used while we are running CFD this model was created, we, this is our car, we scanned it in-house, um, turned it into CAD, and that is how we are analyzing it. This is at factory ride height. One of the first things we can look at is usually what we look at is, well, is coefficient of pressure on the surface of the car. So these are areas where you can see red is high, blue is low, and that's pressure. And coefficient of pressure is kind of a basic thing it's a dimensionless number that describes the pressure relative to atmospheric pressure and it also brings in the velocity into that so basically when you're looking at coefficient of pressure you know how that point changes with speed and changes based on the normal pressure outside your atmospheric pressure so that kind of describes that it's it's a standard uh, practice to use. You should be using coefficient of pressure when you're looking at pressure on like surfaces of things. Um, so one thing you can kind of look at from the information right here is you can see the factory uh, ducktail creates a higher pressure zone back here. That's kind of the purpose of these is it creates a higher pressure zone. And if this wasn't here, you would actually see this all being low pressure. And so this actually adds downforce, kind of. It really reduces lift because this whole top surface of the car right along here is creating lift. So if you're looking at the top of the car, which we are right now, any place in blue is making the car lift up. Any place in red is pushing the car down. So you can definitely tell the ducktail is working really well. Um, you can kind of see some interesting things. Everybody talks about the ducks and how they're fake and they're not, they don't work. If this was real, you can definitely tell it's designed. It's a higher pressure area. So any place you have a, you have an inlet duct, you want high pressure and where you have an outlet, you want low pressure. So this actually would be good for something depending on what you would want to duck something to, but it's obviously not functional. All right, so we are looking at the tire pressure blockers. So these are, we have found, these do hurt overall downforce numbers, but these are good for drag, um, which depending on how your car is currently set up, if you're not gonna run a splitter or anything like that, these are very, very good. If you're gonna run a splitter, depending on the type of splitter and how it's designed, these could be good or bad. It just depends on the whole car and how it's set up. And aero is one of those things where usually the answer to a question is it depends. And that's because there are so many things that could be changed that could totally change the results. But on a factory car and what we're looking at, I can kind of show you a little bit what's going on in that. So if we do like a velocity cut along that tire, you can you can basically see what it does. So this color is off velocity, yellow being high, purple being low velocity. So as I rotate it, you can you can see that where the red is, this is high pressure in front of the tires. This is where a lot of uh, drag from the tire comes from. You also get a lot of drag from the wake, but you can see how this actually disrupts the air and where the tire deflector stops, you actually have increase of pressure all the way along on the top side of the tire, which we found that pretty interesting. Um, these are pretty common on a lot of factory cars anymore. You can see them quite a bit. You can also kind of see how the streamlines are affected in that area from that. And then 
One thing is a slice cut down the center of the car. So this is this is how we can kind of see how the ducktail is working also that I talked about earlier. So you'll see a lot of velocity uh, plots. You'll have usually a lower velocity here, which is where you, why you have high pressure. So if we actually change this to a pressure plot real quick, you have higher pressure in the front, you have lower pressure up here. You can definitely see that when you do with uh, velocity also. I find velocity on the cut plots is more beneficial personally. And then I use pressure plots on surfaces of items. So you have low velocity here, becomes high velocity as it's going underneath the car. You have fairly high velocity along here till about the center. And the bottom of the car actually creates a decent amount of downforce. The overall car creates a tiny bit of lift, but overall it's very neutral. Um, it doesn't, the lift that it creates is very, very small. So I would actually really say it's a neutral car when you're actually driving. It's not creating lift, it's not creating downforce. And the areas where there's high velocity is actually wanting to lift the car up. So along the front side of the hood, wants to lift the car up. Top, it definitely wants to lift the car up. And then here, you can tell it's lower. You can definitely see right along here where it's lower velocity and you have higher pressure. One thing to also think about when you're looking at these types of images are, are when, if you're gonna do hood vents or something along those lines, you're gonna want that in an area that's high velocity and low pressure. So you can definitely use this to target vent, vent locations. Say like if you want to do fender vents, this would be a pretty good location, hood vent. And this is assuming that the underneath is also in that area is um, a good position, but like around right here. So if I hide this again, so you can actually see the full car. Really, this would be the best area to do a hood vent. Uh, you definitely wouldn't want it further back. That actually kind of makes me wonder kind of what this guy is for, the factory fake vents. Or there's kind of like, it's not really a good area to vent like for exit because it's not very low pressure and actually these ends are higher pressure. So they actually wouldn't function well as vents in that location. Maybe if you put some sort of gurney in front of it, it would allow evacu evacuation. Uh, one thing I will mention too, if, if you're wondering, you'll see that if you go down the center of the car, you're like, hey, why isn't this symmetric? Um, when we run the analysis, it's actually running at a little bit of a yaw angle, um, mainly because very rarely when you're driving a car on track or ever is the air going perfectly straight down the center line of the car. And that could give you optimum values that you would actually never achieve. So if you actually run it with a little bit of yaw, you know you're getting more realistic values of what you're gonna see actually on the track. So that's why this is not symmetric. You can definitely tell it with like um, certain types of plots. Definitely when you get into analyzing when it's turning and you start turning the car a little bit and stuff, you start to get some crazy uh, flow fields, pretty cool. Um, another thing too is streamlines down the center of the car you can definitely so i know we did a a cut plot down the center something similar to that would be a streamline you can definitely see how the air is acting and i started it up front which is why you don't see anything back here this is actually the wake zone so if we overlay this with the cut plot this area is the wake and this is where air is rotating i actually might be able to Actually, I know I can, I can change the type it is so we can actually change this to this and you can actually see how the air, like the lines for it. So you can see it kind of rotating and tumbling inside of here. That's the wake zone. That's what's causing a lot of drag on the car as it's driving down. That's the hole it's punching through the air. In essence, this is actually a, pretty awesome plot. I usually do this on the surface of cars um, for flow viz lines and you can use that to visually compare if you spray the car with flow viz and see if your flows properly. It's similar to doing 
uh, tough testing. We've done it in the past. You could probably find it on a blog with like our Porsche and stuff like that. And then one that's a little bit weird that most people don't really understand but is useful is Lambda 2. You can see that, it's colored by velocity. This basically shows where vortices are created. Um, this is pulled by having a total pressure of zero is where this is calculated. Um, again, this might be over some people's heads, but basically you could see where vortices and those types of things are coming off. So you can you can use it to see where thing where, where air is traveling. It's another thing similar to streamlines. Um, I actually this is less visually appealing, but I find it actually better to actually see what's going on with the airflow sometimes. And you could actually change this so it's not fully colored and it's somewhat transparent so you can see a lot more of what's going on. All right, well, that's a quick preview of the factory Supra CFD. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you.